Well, hey, everybody. Uh, good to be back with you this week. Hope that your week has gotten off to a good start. Uh, just want to say thanks for the prayers for those of us who went down to Kansas City last weekend. You heard that if you were here on Sunday or watching. You saw that awesome picture taken by one of our teammates for that trip. Uh, we did have a fantastic time, uh, all things considered, in, in a fairly quick journey to Kansas City and back. But but we really, uh, it was really about people uh, over projects, is what I would say. We uh, we just got to know and love the people of Bridge of Hope Church and the greater community around them in Kansas City, Kansas. There. And then really what happens, and I've seen it often when I take trips uh, with youth groups or with others uh, in the church, just the sense of community that happens in just a short time of being together like that. And so uh, you will hear more about that little trip uh, here in the coming weeks on a Sunday morning. We hope to share a little bit and hope for you to be able to hear from voices other than me as a pastor, but those who went. And so be watching for that. Uh, we're just really grateful, again, for the trip in general and for the support and prayers we had. Um, so tonight, I, or today, I just want to talk about follow up on Rick's sermon, the sermon from Sunday, uh, again, in the book of Luke. Obviously, I wasn't here, but was able to watch it online uh, earlier this week. And, and it just really struck me. First of all, Rick did a, a great job with that passage. Uh, overall, uh, this picture of prayer uh, being there. And in Luke, we see Jesus tell this parable, right, about this persistent woman uh, who keeps going before a, a judge uh, with listing her uh, hopes for justice. And then Jesus uses that parable to, to teach us about prayer, to teach us about persistence in prayer and how it uh, goes before God and, and can have an impact on our lives and and things. So um, it really it was a sermon that really got me thinking. It's a topic, this topic of prayer is something that it, it often uh, is something I think about. I don't, I don't want to say confused about because it's not really the, the angle uh, that I would say or the word I would use. But, but what Rick touched on and what the passage touched on is this idea of why pray? Why do we pray? Why do we have a God who, who tells us often uh, through Scripture about the importance of prayer that we as believers should pray? Uh, my why question comes kind of from a couple different angles, but the first, if God is sovereign, he, he knows what's best for me. So it can be real easy for me to just sit underneath that to not get involved, like God already knows what's best for me. He knows what, what I need. And, and in faith, I believe that. Um, so why would I need to pray? Because I, maybe I'd be getting in the way. Maybe I'd say something that would be against God's will, etc. And so over the course of my Christian life, that's been a little bit of a, a hang up for me, I suppose, uh, that slows me down in prayer. And the second is kind of similar. And Rick used a a theological word that he that he mentioned that he hadn't heard before, and he brought it to me earlier in that week too. And I said I didn't know it either. And it's that that word of aseity, a s e i t y, and he showed it on the screen. But it's essentially the self sufficiency of God. God is outside of any human influence of why he does what he does. He he is not dependent in any way on anything or anyone outside of himself. And so it kind of goes along with what I already referenced with this idea of God being sovereign, of him being a, a, a person or a, a God of a saity, that it becomes a little bit of a tension point. Like he doesn't need me to pray or need you to pray. He's outside of that. He is sovereign. He knows what's best. He even knows what's going to happen anyway. It's this tension point then for us. So then I, I look a little bit into why pray. And I thought Rick answered it, it well based on that passage from Luke and what Jesus was teaching there in, in, that, in that parable, at least a couple of reasons why we should pray. He, I believe, listed six, if I heard it all right. But the idea really is comes first and foremost around the relationship that we have as sons and daughters of God. This relationship that is a, 
a two-way street. Though he is the decision maker, he is sovereign, he still wants that connection point between his people and himself. And I love how Rick said that God is, is moved by compassion. He, he cares about his people. He cares about you and me, about our struggles, about our hopes, about our dreams, about our fears, etc. Our God cares about that, and, and he is drawn by compassion, and he is moved also by our faith. When I'm tempted personally to, to, in faith, know that God is sovereign and he can take it, there's also a level of faith that comes to, here's my request, God. Here's, here's what I need, or here's what I would desire if it were up to me, and we put that in front of him. He's, he's moved by our faith, our willingness to put our requests to him. It's an amazing thing, prayer. It's a, it's a baffling thing, prayer. What it comes down to, to me, what motivates me to, to continue to pray, even as little as I do sometimes, what motivates me really are two things. Obedience. God's Word says it over and over and over again that He desires for us as his people, to come to him in prayer. So obedience and relationship, because I want to have relationship with this God who loves me, who gave himself for me, and who wants to know me. Prayer, not easy, but a strong encouragement here to you today to take a moment, even now after hearing this, to just spend some time with God in prayer, to, to thank him, to present your request to him, and to grow in your relationship with him. Hey, hope you have a great rest of your week. We will see many of you on Sunday.